Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 and the Fate of Iberia expansion. So before we get started in today's episode, I did have an announcement to make regarding the house situation. Now, I know this has nothing to do with the game. Uh, whenever I have these little, you know, intros, usually like, you know, three, maybe four minutes long, where I talk about something that has nothing to do with the series, I do try and put a timestamp in a pinned comment, because I know that not everybody cares or wants to hear about it. And so therefore you can just head down there and skip right past this section. But given how much I've already talked about this in the series, I didn't think it would be odd if I didn't mention this, that we did sell the house this weekend. We are now under contract. Uh, we got the exact amount we wanted to get, uh, which is really, really nice. And unlike the other offers, there weren't any like weird conditions or demands that we pay all the closing costs, which here in Colorado Springs is about $10,000. Uh, so it's the same thing as offering 10,000 less than what you're asking for. So there wasn't any of that. Uh, of course, no offer is perfect. Uh, he did want to close like really, really quickly. Uh, so that's kind of the only issue with the offer is that uh, it's basically 26 days for closing. Now 25 days since we got the offer yesterday. Uh, so yeah, not very long before we needed to get out of here. I'm not entirely sure why he wanted to close so quickly, particularly because he didn't actually want to move in that early. I believe he might be active duty military, so maybe it has something to do with that. When I was in the army, I never bought a house. Uh, I always lived on base, on base housing, so I'm not entirely sure how that works when you're in the military. Uh, but it might have something to do with that, why he wants the closing date at that specific day. But he wasn't willing to move it at all, uh, which is a little bit too soon for us. But luckily, since he didn't need to actually take possession of the house that day, we are doing, I think it's called a, a post-closing occupancy agreement, uh, where we're going to be renting the house from him for like two weeks, just to allow us to have a little bit more time to, to find a house and, and make an offer and, and get closer to that closing date uh, on the house that we purchase. So it's it's really really cheap overall. Like it's five hundred dollars for two weeks. That's what the rent's gonna be. Uh, so if if you know anything about Colorado Springs, that's incredibly cheap here. Uh, if you wanted like a two bedroom apartment here, it'd be like fifteen hundred, maybe probably closer to eighteen hundred to live in a really terrible neighborhood. I know this because we used to rent an apartment here, and it's only gotten more expensive. Uh, I think we were paying like thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars. So I know it's at least fifteen hundred. It's probably a hell of a lot more because this was like five years ago uh, so the the rental market here is really really bad uh, so you can't really beat five hundred dollars for two weeks so it's, it's a good offer uh, again I don't know why he wanted to close so soon uh, so that was the one negative with the the deal but it's rare that you're gonna get a perfect deal with everything exactly the way you wanted it I'm just glad we got the house sold that does mean that we now have a very limited time to, to find another house guys as you guys might recall I think maybe earlier in the series I mentioned it might be a uh, might have been the, the previous series though uh, I did go and look at houses uh, I had a couple that we really liked uh, we tried to make an offer but nobody was willing to accept an offer that had a condition that we sell our own house which is understandable nobody knows our situation they don't know how long it's gonna take for us to sell our house uh, which it did take a little while uh, so I understand and, and we did lose uh, a really really nice house because of that but now that the house is sold we don't have to have that condition and shouldn't have any issues uh, with any offer we we decide to make we just gotta find a house that we actually like now so this weekend I'm gonna be going to look at houses probably by myself it's just quicker and faster if I don't bring uh, the wife and kids so I will be out of state all weekend uh, so we, we probably won't have any videos across the weekend probably not on Tuesday either unfortunately but That'll be like the last big thing we got to do. And, and we're at the point where we have to make an offer this weekend uh, to get out of here in, in a reasonable time. Uh, so that should be the, the last really difficult thing that we got to do that will impact the channel. And we'll kind of be able to get back onto the regular series, regular uh, schedule, I should say, uh, until we actually move, in which case, you know, there's going to be like weeks without content uh, because, you know, obviously I got to get everything set up at the new place and get moved and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, that should be the last thing, uh, at least for a while, uh, that will impact uh, the content. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be gone all weekend. Uh, I'll try and get, I'll try and get three videos put out this week before the weekend. So maybe this one here on Tuesday, and then maybe one on Thursday and one on Friday. Try my best to put out as many videos as I can, since we won't have any weekend content. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited for uh, you know to, to find a house. Hopefully, you can find something we like. And um, yeah, just I'm just glad that we got the the house sold finally. It was it was a real hassle with all the showings. So I'm glad we're not doing that anymore. 
Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Remember, we started this war against Leon last episode, and we didn't really do anything. I think we rose up our army, split them up, uh, gave them some initial orders here. Uh, but that's it. Uh, so let's go ahead and let it play. I guess we'll slow it down a little bit since we're at war. And uh, he's pulling all his allies in, which we expected. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Can we attack him here in time? It looks like that's a no. All right, so we're going to need to go this way. And I think attacking him here would be across a river and into the hills. Uh, but we outnumber him by you know two to one, so that's not that big of a deal. But I'm worried that his allies will come assist him here. So that might be a problem. So let's just go here for now. Or, you know what, we can go here and then attack right there. Yeah, we'll do it that way. I don't know if he'll get out of there in time. Yeah, he's leaving, so he might get out of there. I was hoping to attack him before uh, his allies came. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. I think he is going to get out of here in time, which is kind of a shame. But we'll see what we can do here, guys. That's going to re result in us getting attrition, so that. It's only 137. I don't think we're going to catch this guy. We'll, we'll see. But I suppose we can go ahead and start the siege. Uh, since our army is in the area, I wanted to get one battle going, but yeah, I don't think that's going to be happening here. Uh, so let's go and start the siege, and what we'll do is we'll have him go attack this location, and then probably have this guy go attack this location. Yeah, we'll do that, and uh, we need to keep our army around the area, essentially, uh, so we don't get outnumbered. Now, we cannot pull in any additional allies. We have one ally who should be coming to help. Yeah, that's 3,200 troops should help us out, uh, but we probably going to have to pull another ally in, I'm assuming. All right, so there's the... The two armies here probably not going to win against both of them. I think the reason why it says we're going to win here is because we're only going to be fighting the 2700. We can attempt it. Could go this way instead. What's interesting is that he would be able to get out of there, I think. Yeah, and no matter what, we're going to take some, uh, some attrition here. Yeah, I think I might do it anyway, guys. Just see what happens here. I'm not entirely sure why this would not be a an attack. It didn't seem like he'd be able to get out of there in time, but maybe. Yeah, he is pretty close to getting there. Uh, just looking here, it's two days away. It's going to be 15 days for us to get there. Yeah, I assume he'd be able to leave, so we're just going to have to keep on chasing him. It's better to just go ahead and attack here. And um, this could be bad, because I assume he's going to turn around and come assist. Oh, we can't even get there in time. Wow. Yeah, even that is not soon enough. Yeah, nine days here. We get there in 11. I can go here instead. It does look like we'll get there in time. Uh, that allows this guy to come back, which again is what I assume he'll do. And can we win? With this one, we're only doing the mountain penalty. Well, on this one, he had some defensive buildings that were going to help. Uh, we got these sieges started nine months here, eight months here. That must be a larger fort there because we actually have the better army here. He is not coming to assist, interestingly enough. Because with that extra 27, 2800 men, he would outnumber us. So yeah, it's surprising he didn't uh, come and assist. So this will let us get some positive war score. Another one of our friends died, so... And this is uh, one of the sheiks. So this is going to result... Where is this at? This is over here. And us having incredibly high stress. He's a Republican heir. So he's got increased stewardship and learning. But even then, he's really not all that good here. Yeah, nothing's really good with this Sheik Ramon. Isn't that his father's name, too? Yep, he's named after his father. All right, so it shouldn't be hard to remember who he is. Uh, so we did get that stress. We also built the meadows. I didn't see where that was. That's probably right here. Yeah, we're still building over here, I think. So yeah, we can go ahead and build something here. We do got to keep our eyes on the money and not spend too much, obviously. Uh, yeah, we probably don't want to build these right now. Not where we're at war, and we don't know how long this war will last, and if we'll need the money the whole time. Uh, so let's not build anything. We will wait, guys. I think that's uh, probably for the best. We can try and lose weight. Of course, that'll result in some stress gain. I don't know that we would care about that, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think our guy's fine with being a little overweight. He's been enjoying himself. So we're not going to do that. Um, there's really not anything we can do to reduce stress right now since we're leading the troops. Uh, but you get another perk, so that'll be helpful. Uh, I don't know if that'll apply for this battle because it's already started, but uh, 
Might not even get anything that would help us in that regard. Yeah, this is just going to be a fort level bonus. And enemy occupations do not lower control. So I'm going to grab that. Yeah, that's helpful, but not really so much for this conflict. I, I guess unless they go and attack our territory, which they could end up doing. Uh, another scheme at court. And somebody's plotting to kill one of our knights, uh, Idris. Okay. I don't think we're going to get much involved with this at all. Or do anything about it. So yeah, I'm surprised that uh, he's just sticking around here. Just going to let me do another battle. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking. Uh, but we lost half the numbers they did. This is not bad at all. Uh, considering that they did have the defensive bonuses. Yeah, not bad. Uh, but that's how Sheik Ramon died. He died in the battle. He was killed by Duke Sancho. Alright, so I think we're going to go ahead and just attack now. Again, that's kind of like the penalty of him leaving those troops there. Like, why is he? Why was he just sitting there? And he's going to let us attack now. This will be a little bit more difficult battle because um, we have less troops, first of all. And also they have the defensive buildings, but should still be a victory here. And um, we're not getting much war score here from the battles. Only 4% there. Our ally is going to assist us with this. We don't really need his assistance, but we'll take it. And friendly exchanges. Uh, so our granddaughter has higher opinion of us. That was due to our spouse. Oh, yeah, he's going to arrive probably right when the battle's ending. We'll have to see what the, our ally ends up doing after that. Uh, but we can lose some stress here, so that's super helpful. Because, yeah, the stress is getting a bit high. Definitely a concern. We have one more friend die. We go into the critical at this point. So, yeah, i got to get that lowered. All right, so the battle was won. Uh, and this one, again, we lost about half the men that they did. Um, you know, manpower is not really a big issue in CK3, but still, you know, you don't want to take high casualties. Uh, so with that done, I think we're going to go ahead and retreat. Because, you know, we uh, need to protect our armies here. So we could sit here for a little while, but eventually it's going to become a problem. We'll have too many troops here. I guess we'll just move when that happens, but yeah, you can see that we'll, we'll eventually go over the number and won't be able to supply our guys there anymore. Uh, so we knew he was going to die soon, and that's why we didn't replace him as Chancellor. Because I think I was planning on putting Idris here. Now, he's not the best in diplomacy. He's not a powerful noble, and she actually is uh, a powerful vassal, and she has much better diplomacy. But I just like this idea here of having like all the positions, with the exception of the Alamon, our spouse, of course, uh, filled by our sons. Because as of right now, we have a son in each one. So I just like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put Idris in here. Idris, of course, is the eldest of our sons who we disinherited. And now, uh, you know, doesn't really have much of a role in our court. And Knights, uh, Knights Templar have been called in. Not surprising. I expected something like that or some mercenaries, uh, which is why we called our ally in. And we'll probably need to call another ally in just to make this war be a little smoother. And we're not really getting much points over here. Oh, they did uh, come over here and siege us. I didn't see that. Uh, so we actually have to go down there, which puts us in a really bad position. Because we can't leave these armies over here. Hmm. We have to at least let these sieges finish up. Alright, so we'll have to see what happens here, guys. I really want to attack them down here and stop this siege, but... Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be an option until we uh, either finish the sieges or do a battle here. Uh, we are outnumbered at this point in, in the conflict, so it's definitely um, a concern. You know, now that they got the, uh, the Knights Templar in here. If he takes off and goes somewhere else, then we can come down here real quick and attack those guys. It looks like they're leaving anyway. Alright, I'm not entirely sure why or what they're doing. They might be trying to get all their troops into the same area. Yeah, it seems like that's the case. Uh, I think by them doing that, they're going to allow us to at least finish up the siege of the capital here. So that'll be big, but I think they're going to attack right there. Maybe not. They might actually come over and attack these troops. This would be the army they need to attack. They need to defeat them uh, in order to uh, have any hope of, of finishing this up. We didn't capture any important characters, unfortunately. I was hoping that we would, like get an heir or whatever, but that, that's not the case. Uh, but we got his capital, so that's what's important. And... Why do I not have anybody leading these troops? I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but do we have anybody who could speed up sieges? Uh, just us, and obviously we're already leading troops. Alright, if there's nobody who speeds the sieges up, then we'll just put uh, 
Probably this guy in charge here. Maybe this one. Well, he has less overall advantage, so probably just go with him. I think he's a former peasant leader. Oh, and he's a giant. Alright, so not sure what the enemy is doing here, but as you can see, they have a massive army in total. Yeah, this is a rough position. Um, let's go ahead and get these guys moving over here, uh, getting out of there. I don't know if we're going to do another siege because I feel like we're going to need to do a battle with all of our troops. But let's finish up this siege first. It's going to be nine days here. And maybe get ourselves into a, a defensive position somewhere. I guess we'll go over here for now. Yeah, I, I really don't know what they're going to do here, guys. They're kind of bouncing all over the place. But uh, we're looking at over 14,000 troops. Yeah, that's not good. We would have to fight them in uh, a location that's, you know, defensively favorable for ourselves. Uh, we did take over this whole location. Uh, so now at 47%. Uh, I don't know if that's enough to get the ticking war score. Looks like that's a no. We hold the one uh, county, but might have to hold more of the duchy in order to uh, actually start getting the ticking war score. So we're at 47% currently. Uh, so definitely, obviously not enough. We're going to have to do a battle, but yeah, we're just so outnumbered at this point. Uh, we could hire some mercenaries, I suppose. Uh, something we don't typically do. Uh, we might have to, though, simply because we are so vastly outnumbered at this point. Um, I feel like if we can fight in somewhere defensive, we'll still win, though. So let's see if we can't get them to attack us somewhere defensively. Let's see what we can do here. Like, if we go over this way, bring these guys over here, and then have him retreat up this way to uh, the hills. Let's see if they can't, uh, they won't go after us. I assume they're going to wipe out our ally. Maybe not. I don't really know what they're going to do, honestly. Just waste all their supplies, waste all their money, get themselves in debt. That sounds about right. Uh, if they attack in the hills to try and take your capital back, then that would be the location we would engage them. Uh, they are trying to get the ally uh, army in a battle. And it looks like they did. Okay. So that, unfortunately, is going to reduce the war score some. Hopefully not much. Our two battles only did 4%, so this is just an ally. You'd expect it not to be more than 4%. It's only 2,000-something dudes. But of course it is. Of course it is. That's ridiculous. So we got 4% for defeating two armies of about, you know, 2,700 men. And then he gets how much? Like, a, just a ridiculous amount. You're 10% for defeating an allied army of 2,300 men. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so I don't know why uh, we got screwed over like that. That's a real shame. Yeah. So now I assume they're going to come over here, and we can attempt to attack them, but uh, it doesn't look good. Yeah, it doesn't really look good for us uh, as far as winning there. Like, if we sent the entire army there, I don't really know how that would look. Let me just take a look here if we'd win this. Chances are even. Okay, uh, we get the defensive buildings, we get the defending the hills, but we'll be outnumbered. Um, it is really hard to say whether we would win this or not. We have the better commander, we have more men at arms counters as well. I would think we would try and, and do the battle, guys. Even if it's even, um, like what else can we do here? Yeah, I don't really like it being even, but you never know. Maybe we'll win it. Maybe some of their troops will run. I don't know. Maybe it'll be too spread out. We'll get a chance to do the battle for a little while. Uh, we do need to actually wait here for a second. Because we're going to get there too soon. So let's just wait for this army. Because we're going to need all the armies here, guys. In order to win this battle. Yeah, they're going to spread out some. So we'll have a, a little bit of time where we're engaging the battle. We'll be engaging in the battle alone. Alright, so this is going to be seven days. Uh, he'll get there in... 15 days, so we should have moved him already. And then, I'm not entirely sure how long it'd take for him to get there. Looks like 11 days or so. So we'll see, guys. Um, I don't think we're going to win this, but, but we'll try. Uh, we also were able to sway our Alamo, so we'll go ahead and continue that. Get it a little bit higher, I suppose. Alright, so it doesn't look great. Chances are even. Now it says we'll probably win. I don't know about that, guys. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, we had another grandson born, and uh, this is to Abu Bakr. He's had three children so far. 
Uh, so let's go and pick a name for him. Uh, maybe name after ourselves, perhaps? Another Yusef? And he lives close to his father. He, uh, I think he's friends with us, isn't he? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's friends with us. So it just feels right that he would name his one of his sons after his much beloved father. All right, so here's the big battle, guys. Let's just hope we win this. As of right now, it does look like we're going to lose. Yeah, we're going to lose it, unfortunately. All right, well, I was hoping that would be a win, but yeah, it looks like we did lose. So, you know, they'll have to do the siege here now. Uh, we're going to have to call in another ally, essentially. He got all those allies himself, and, um, oh no. Prince Ahmed was murdered. So he was slain in this battle. Um, so now, I mean, this kind of works out a little bit better in a sense, although this did result in us getting incredibly stressed out. I don't think there's anything we can do about that either. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. But yeah, this will result in us having a much younger heir now, since we'll have his son, one of his sons, that's uh, Sheik Musa, is currently the heir. We also have, he has another son here, uh, Abdullah. And he's rowdy. Uh, we can go ahead and choose his education focus. And I'm thinking probably intrigue like his father. Yeah, let's do intrigue like his father did. Uh, so, yeah, we have a, a new heir. He's going to be uh, a much better age, honestly, when we become him. Because uh, Ahmed would have been pretty old by the time we played his character, probably in his 40s or so. Uh, so with him, you know, he's going to be a teen um, by the time we... Uh, our current character dies, so it kind of works out better, in a sense. But uh, Ahmed was a good character, so I would like to play as him anyways. Uh, we do need to find another Spy Master now, as well. Uh, as far as our choices among the, the powerful vassals, this guy's just okay. He doesn't like us either, though that will get boosted once we get him in position. I think we're going to put this uh, Wally in charge with his high entry. I think that makes sense. So yeah, one of our sons again died as as a knight. It's kind of it's what happens, guys. We let him fight. Uh, some of them are gonna die, and and it makes sense here that we would have a mental break. We just lost another son. Uh, so what are our options here? So we could say this pain is far too raw. I need something to numb it. So we could go with that option. That'll reduce the stress by 41. But you could say it is hard, but Fatima can help me get through this. Uh, so this is. We'll get the trait confider, which will actually give us diplomacy and stress loss. And uh, we'll get the managed grief, which in this case we don't get that. We'll have that for, for five years. We'll increase opinion with our spouse, and we'll lose the, the 41 stress. Hmm. I think we might just go with this one. I give a increased diplomacy. I know the managed grief is gonna tick everything down. I guess you got that for five years, uh, but this one's also gonna reduce stuff. So yeah, we'll go with this one. And uh, you know that's gonna reduce all of our stats. Yeah, just a, a devastating uh, battle here. I thought it'd be much closer than it was. Um, yeah, this ended up being pretty bad. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. And yeah, that just seemed like that kind of led us astray. It was. Uh, you know, more even, but this does not look even at all. We lost two times the numbers. Yeah, just kind of devastating here. Uh, looks like uh, one of our key knights here, that giant peasant leader, or former peasant leader, uh, was captured. Of course, our son was killed. So yeah, devastating defeat there. And now we're down to 18% on the war score. So not good, guys. Uh, due to those lost battles. Now, one of those, as I said, I don't think it was uh, very fitting how much war score they got. I don't know why we only got 4% war score. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, in my opinion. We get 4% for, two, for each of our two battles, and they get 10% for one, and it was less troops they defeated, and it was an ally. Again, kind of strange, but, uh, you know, Paradox Games kind of do what they want. So now our troops retreat. Um, yeah, we're probably not going to be able to stop them before they finish the siege. I mean, it's 27 days. Uh, then they have this siege here in four months. So yeah, I think they'll end up taking it all back and we'll be in the negative on the war score. Um, frankly, we got to call in another ally. These guys don't have any troops here. Um, so I guess we'll call in them. Call them into the war. Uh, and we'll have to go back into the negative on the prestige, unfortunately. We gotta get some more assistance here, though. Could also try and hire some mercenaries. 
Uh, but let's get our troops ready to fight first, because obviously, uh, you know, we, we lost a lot, of, a lot of dudes, and it's going to take a little while to get those numbers back up. But yeah, this is not going as well as I hoped. Again, they had a lot of allies, but I think the, the real, uh, uh, you know, killer was them bringing in the Templar Knights. Uh, that is often causing us, uh, causes us some very issues in, in many conflicts. So this is in regards to our son, Malik, uh, Mu'aladi Exaltation. The poor and needy are always welcome in Malik's mosque. The Emir of Aragon has become famous for his generous nature and his many works of charity. His example has moved many, uh, many Mu'aladis to abandon their material possessions in the pursuit for a divine reward. So how commendable. All right, so that actually increased uh, the fervor of our faith. Uh, so we're going to retreat all the way back to the capital, as you see here, guys. So we need to get these troops spread back out. Uh, kind of bring them a little bit closer, at least, over here. And we'll also bring these guys over there as well. And I think I sent them... Let me see, where did I send this guy? Right there. All right, so we want to kind of keep them close to each other, whatever. I guess we'll bring this guy here. And then them, they do need another commander. We'll go ahead and move them over here. All right, so again, can't uh, can't uh, stop them taking their, that back. They already took it back, and probably not going to stop them from taking this back either. So now it's going to be uh, trying to stay on the defense um, until we get our allies over here. This is 3,500, so that'll be helpful, and um, we'll still be outnumbered. That's just the reality. So we might need to bring some more troops in uh, through mercenaries, but I really feel like we should at least try and get our numbers back up here. Uh, also, we can no longer manage the same amount of holdings. Pretty big penalty here, so we really need to give a, a title out. And so I think we're finally going to give a title to our eldest son. So basically just need to find the one that's worth the least, which would probably be this one here. So let's going to grant that to our son, Idris. So that we're no longer losing that money there. And yeah, just overall, kind of a negative there. So trying to get these troop numbers back up to the previous numbers here. And then we're going to just have to wait until they attack us. And, and let's just hope they attack. Probably you should have them attack here in the mountains. We can't sit there. Yeah, we wouldn't have enough supply to be here. Yeah, the mountain supply is horrible. Not surprising. But that's what we need them to do, to attack us in the mountains there. Okay, well let's see if we can't move. We can move over here for a little while. But won't get any defensive bonuses there. Uh, really, I think what we're going to have to do here is is attack them. Uh, because I think they're going to attack one of our locations, um, one of our counties here. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to start doing sieges now. Uh, we're now at negative 19%. I'm not too worried yet at this point, guys. I think we're still in an alright position. We can ransom off that character for more money. She's worth uh, 50, 50 gold here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, because I'm thinking about hiring some mercenaries here. Uh, looks like we're still losing supplies here. I'm not entirely sure why we're losing supplies here. We should be... Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, we're, we're losing supplies. Okay. So we can go and go here, but then they could attack us. And obviously, that would not be a good location to be defending in. I suppose we can just go to the hills here. Yeah, I guess that's what we're going to have to do. And then bring all the other troops up over here as well. So that's got, got us that 50 gold here. So we can go and hire some mercenaries, and then with the assistance of our ally here, and the mercenaries, we might be able to get a win. That's kind of a big what if here. I really don't know if that would be enough. But let's go ahead and get our troops moved to these locations. And let's see if they'll attack us. Because this is really not the best location for us to attack. Because it's in the plains. So I'd prefer they attack here in the hills. Looks like that is not gonna gonna work. Yeah, they're not really interested in attacking here. Alright. So it is winter. And so this is going to eat up their supplies here, so we will have that advantage. We only have three months left, so I think we're going to have to hire some mercenaries, essentially, guys. There's really no way around it. Um, I don't know if we're going to get anybody decent, since we don't really have very much money. So you can see all like the good mercenaries here, the larger ones. 
are going to be too expensive. Uh, so essentially you can just get 900 something dudes. It's really not going to help that much. And you're using all of your money, so you're just going to put you in the negative. So hiring mercenaries probably is uh, not going to be an option for us guys. Just can't get enough. Yeah, I don't think that's effective. Now, we did have some knights die, so we could raise up some additional knights, I suppose. Yeah, I guess we can go and raise up some additional knights. Let's go ahead and take this and move it over to here. And then we'll raise up some additional troops here. Uh, it's just going to be knights and stuff, I assume. And some levies. So four knights and some levies. So I'll raise those guys up and get them moving over to this army here. And then we'll just attack with what we have, and I don't know if that's going to be enough, guys. Let me just see here what kind of bonuses we get. We do have defensive buildings. Uh, we only have three months to do that attack, so yeah, we're going to have to do that, guys. And uh, just see how we do. Um, there's really another choice here. Uh, we'll get the assistance of our allies. We'll be outnumbered. Um, we'll have defensive bonuses and a better commander, but uh, that was not enough in the previous battle. Um, but yeah, there's really not much else to do here, guys. It's either do that and... Um, you know, potentially win the war, maybe make it worse, uh, or don't do it, and then you're going to lose anyways, because they're keeping all their armies together. So you can't even try and, like, ambush one of them as they spread out. So they're just keeping all three armies here, massive armies here together. And so it's really the only option. You can't really gang up on one of them, uh, which is the typical way to do it. Uh, now, we could try and force them to attack us somewhere defensively, but, I mean, the defensive bonuses you're going to get here are probably similar to what you'd get uh, elsewhere. So, yeah, uh, might as well attempt it, see what happens. So this is a continuation of the Duchess Perine of Toulouse's attempt to romance us. You can see she's currently pregnant, and I don't think we laid with her yet, so she's either still sleeping with her husband, or she has another secret lover. Uh, so I can scarce remember what my life was like before Perine declared her feelings for me. Those days seem so bleak, so dreary. But with her by my side, everything and anything seems possible. I wish we could go on like this forever, but deep down, I know I must make a choice. Am I brave enough to give in to my feelings, or must I shut my heart to Perine forever? Well, we are brave, and so I feel like we should do this option. Though this would make her our soulmate. I don't know, that seems a bit strong. Yeah, like, I don't see her being more our soulmate than, like, uh, Fatima. So I don't think we're going to go that route. Yeah, I think instead we might do the one true love kiss is all I can give. She will not become our soulmate. But I imagine we'll still be romance by her. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense for her to be our soulmate. Yeah, we'll do that one and see what happens. I don't know if that ends. It doesn't end the romance, because, yeah, I would have said so. It said said that with the other option. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there, guys. Yeah, we still have an, uh, another event with this. The Wild Hunt. I am out riding when my horse suddenly throws itself off the path. The fall is unavoidable and knocks the air out of my lungs. When I look up, I find myself face-to-face -face with a wolf. Before I can get a chance to scream, the beast collapses, an arrow between its eyes. Yusef, my honeycomb, I thought I'd lost you. My hero is none other than Duchess Perine. So she saved her life. Alright, so still waiting for these guys to merge here. And do we want to attack right now? We have time. Remember, we're raising up our troops. They just get further and further in the hole, most likely. Or at least these guys would. Because, yeah, they're losing supplies. Uh, but they're also probably losing money, I assume. Not as much as we are. We got a little bit of money to play around with, but yeah, he's not losing that much. So yeah, we could wait a little bit longer. This lets us uh, raise more troops up as well. As you can see here, all these guys are still raising troops. So maybe give it probably like that, I think. Let me see how long it would take for, for these guys to get over there. Uh, so we're looking at 23 days. We want them to kind of uh, attack around the same time. He'll be a little bit smarter with this. So he'll get there in 10 days, 15 days. What about this guy here? And about 16. Okay, so that's not too bad. So I might just want to slow this down just a little bit. Just 
kind of time this a little bit better. So that we uh, all get there around the same time. I'm hoping the ally will come assist. Yeah, okay, so now he's coming. He just stopped because I, I moved the 5,000 out. So as of right now, it's saying we're going to win, guys. I don't know. I don't think that's entirely accurate. Um, he is leaving. So maybe we can just battle some of them and get them wiped out. Yeah, I think this is going to go in our favor because some of these guys are trying to leave here. But I don't know because some of them are coming back now. It's really hard to say what's going to happen here, essentially. We vastly outnumber them here, so that looks good. Yeah, I think uh, with those ones taken off, we'll outnumber them in the battle. Uh, so we're in a pretty good position then. We should be able to win this. Did our other ally ever raise his troops up? Looks like that's a no. He only has 960. Uh, also, is he in prison right now? Yeah, he's currently locked up. Okay, so that's not a good situation for him. And enemy ally joins the war, so they're going to bring in this countess and her 2,500 troops. But I think this is uh, just that her... Yeah, her father died. He was slain in that battle. So we killed uh, one of his, his allies, bringing in the, the daughter. And um, it's not going to change the troop numbers or anything like that. All right, so yeah, this went good for us. Um, also, we swayed him again. Don't really need to sway him any further. Uh, so let's work on Idris, who, of course, hates us for good reason. Uh, makes sense that uh, he doesn't like us. We did disinherit him. Uh, I'm really surprised that he just now got his wife pregnant. He's been married longer than any of his other brothers, I think. And um, just now, had his first child. It, it shows how de devastated Idris was. He just uh, he couldn't even perform in the bedroom. Cause he was just so messed up about being disinherited. All right, so with that win, um, we did capture the the son of the Queen of Galicia. But, of course, that will not help us since we're not really at war with Galicia. They're just pulled in as an ally. We're at war with Leon. All right, so we got a victory here, guys, but we still are in the negative when it comes to the battles. Uh, of course, they have the, the ticking war score as well. Uh, we can go out and, and defeat these guys here. All right, so this is what we're going to do, and I hope this doesn't go against me. Yeah, I hope this isn't too foolish. We'll see. Um, they got to retreat pretty far, and I'm hoping I can take advantage of that to go and do this attack real quick. Or at least force them to retreat so they can't do the siege. Try and get another um, win here with the support of our allies while they retreat and we start the sieges. And, and that's where I'm worried that it could go against us is, you know, if we're in this battle and they come back and attack. Just a matter of how long it takes for them to get back up here, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I, I really don't want to do the battle here uh, in the hills regardless, so we might have to retreat from there. Honestly, this this battle is a, it's going to be an uphill uh, victory if we can even achieve a victory. Uh, this is how it went here. Um, so we killed a a lot of their dudes, but lost quite a few of ours as well. Uh, but this battle here will get us some war score, but not nearly enough. As you can see, we're just not getting much from the battles, guys. Not as much as they are. We gotta do the sieges, essentially. They get a lot more points from the battles, which maybe that's simply because well, it looks like we captured somebody important. Is that his heir? It's an, certainly an heir. Uh, I don't know if it's the heir. Let's find out. Yeah, it's the heir. The, the primary air. Alright, so that worked out fantastically for us. Uh, now we are at 41%. So at the very least, we should be able to... Oh, that's a 10% war score. Alright, so that's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, at the very least, um, we should at least be able to get a white piece. And, and not lose this conflict. But yeah, let's see if we can get a victory, though. We're going to try for the victory. Um, again, it's an uphill battle to get the victory, um, even with that. Because we're still outnumbered. That's the simple fact of the matter. And we have our ally here, so that really helps. But we need to get this ally back into the conflict. I don't know if he'll be able to come in or not. Uh, we need to go over here. Otherwise, we can't supply our troops here. Uh, which, we are doing fine on supplies as of right now. Uh, we will continue to do this to reduce the stress. Uh, also, it looks like we have an item of some sort. A uh, new weapon. So the sword is exactly the same as our hammer. Just given the plus two prowess, and we gotta have our hammer here, guys. Uh, we do need to repair it. Let's go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it here. Because that's our lucky hammer. We love that hammer. Almost as much as we used to love our cat, Snow. Uh, we do have prisoners we can ransom. Uh, we don't want to ransom the uh, the heir, obviously. That would be uh, disastrous. So that's that character there. Uh, we also have a count here. 
with that nasty prowess, we cannot afford to ransom him. Um, and then we have him, which just because who he is, I think we'll be leaving him in prison as well. So we're not going to ransom any of those characters, essentially. All right, so with the sieges, we've already taken over the capital again, so that's absolutely fantastic. In addition, we've taken control of his wife. So we now uh, won the war because of that. Oh, did we capture him as well? You think that would be the pertinent, inf pertinent information here. Instead, they shared that we had captured the wife. So we won the conflict now. Um, so we can go and force our uh, demands on them. This worked out really well for us after those uh, several defeats. I wasn't sure. I thought we could turn it around for sure, especially with our ally coming in to help us. Uh, but yeah, this was one that I was thinking maybe White Peace would be uh, a possibility that we'd have to go for. But captured some important characters, and with that, we had the victory. Uh, we turned it around. I don't think we're going to wait for this, plus things could easily go against us. We're still outnumbered in the war, uh, so his uh, army is going to be moving back north. And um, yeah, there's really no advantage to waiting, frankly. So let's go ahead and enforce our demands. This worked out uh, very well for us. It was a difficult conflict, but we won it. That's what's important. Um, so with that, we have taken over all that territory. Just beautiful. And um, we already know where this territory is supposed to go. Uh, we got to give it to our other son. As that's what we're going to be doing, is granting it to the youngest son, Yusef, uh, so that he will have a secure inheritance. I don't know that we're going to wait until he's of age, though, because... Yeah, it's not going to be in a year, and, and we're over the cap right now. So it just makes sense to go ahead and grant this to him now. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and grant it to him. Though, do I have the duchy? I suppose that's the question. I don't know if we actually have the duchy title, which is what we'd need. We'd have to create it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to create it. Unfortunately, I had to spend the money for that, but that's okay. And um, then go ahead and grant it to Yusef to uh, secure the inheritance. We'll be done here, guys. So we're going to grant him both of those counties, and we're going to grant him the actual duchy title as well. So he'll really, really like us. He'll get those two vassals, and um, his inheritance is now secured. Uh, although, remember, it's our grandson that's going to be taken over now, since our son Ahmed did die. Um, so yeah, let's go and take a look, just ensure that the succession is good. And it is not, oh, because of the, yeah, because of this situation. You now have Ibrahim. Alright, so that's a problem. And a little irritating because he's already gotten a duchy. But we didn't give it to him, so that's what the problem is. So I think we're just going to disinherit him, guys, because he already got a duchy. It's because he got it from his father when his father died rather than from us. And that's the reason why it's doing this. And, um, yeah, I don't agree with that. So we're just going to go ahead and disinherit him. He already has a duchy. Um, and, you know, we, we thought we might have to do the disinheriting again anyways. We didn't know if we'd get that title or not in time. Um, so this is what we're missing. We need to get 900 prestige before we die so that we can uh, ensure that all the territory goes to Musa. Although, honestly, I'm not extremely excited about Musa. Um, I'd prefer it goes to his brother, Abdullah, because he's got the quick trait. I mean, he's he's okay, I suppose. Yeah, you know, we haven't really found out much about him yet. Um, but yeah, I kind of prefer that his brother got got the title, but it is what it is right now. So there's nothing that we can really do about it. Uh, we can go ahead and ally all of these guys. Why not? Sons and grandsons and stuff. All right. Um, so we have those prisoners we can now ransom. We need the money uh, pretty bad. So let's go ahead and do that. Ransom them all off and... Um, this is going to be 100 gold for his spouse, so a nice little chunk of money. Uh, and then we have the, the sheik here who will ransom himself for 50 gold. And then we have uh, the king's... Well, this wouldn't be the king's son. This is her son, right? Yeah, this is her son. Um, so we can go ahead and get the 50 gold here as well. All right, so it's going to ransom them all off. I suppose, suppose there would have been some benefit to converting them instead. But uh, you know what? We, we don't really want them to be Muslim over here since... We're mainly focusing on conquering Christians. If we convert them instead, then then the wars would get uh, more expensive, piety-wise particularly. Um, so with that, that's that's a good little chunk of money. That's 200 gold here. Kind of pays for us creating that title just about. And um, we need to create some, uh, excuse me, we need to construct some buildings as well. 
So this is an event about the unknown sultan. So this is involving one of our guests, Aaliyah. Don't know who she is, but she's Muslim and Castilian. Oh, you'll never believe what happened next. My guest Aaliyah won't stop talking about herself and all the things that have happened to her. In addition to the, her endless prattling, I'm at unease with this stranger speaking so informally to me. I try to excuse myself from the guest by telling her I have other matters and peoples to attend to, but she interrupts me, asking what job I have or if I'm here to enjoy the extravagant beds like every other guest. Uh, so she doesn't know. We're the Sultan, hence the name of the event. Uh, dumbfounded, I manage to respond, I am the Sultan. The blood drains from her face and she begins to stutter. My most sincerest apologies, my lord. I, I promise I'm not here to simply leech off your fortunes and stay in the finest lodgings in the realm. I swear it's just that your court's reputation is more talked about than your appearance, my lord. Alright, so she done got herself in trouble. And um, we are an impatient character. Quite impatient and greedy, so we don't really like her leeching off us. So let's see what we'll say here. Uh, maybe they'll remember me if I make an example of you. That'll get us some dread. Uh, we'll, re you know, lose some opinion with her. And we'll gain 35 prestige. We can instead say, spread the word that I am an accommodating host. Yeah, we wouldn't do that, not as a greedy character, but you would get some renown if you did that. You can instead say, I'll have a mandatory test for guests that they must pass to stay here. This will result in get us getting that prestige uh, in addition to getting some renown. Or you say, I actually don't mind everyone not knowing who I am. Hmm. I feel like we're definitely going to do one of these two here. I like the idea of getting some, some renown. Uh, getting dreads nice too. I think this one makes the most sense though. Uh, because of our impatience. And you can see that we have clearly lost our patience with her. Uh, so I think we're going to go with this option, guys. And uh, the prestige is helpful because we're trying to get uh, 900 prestige right now to secure the inheritance, something I thought we'd already done. Now we got a grandson causing some problems. Alright, so Aragon has gotten bigger. Look at that. Cover almost the entire north at this point. Uh, the Christians have lost a lot of territory. There's really not much left to them. Uh, yeah, there's this little tiny county here. And then you got this count over here. And then you got what Leon has. And then you got Galicia. And that's it for the Christians in Iberia. And, oh, we lost a, a spouse. Oh, that's a shame. All right. Would we marry again, though? I feel like probably not. Obviously, you lose more piety, but we've long since stopped caring about that. I think we just let her take over. Uh, you also have her, but she's not as impressive skill-wise. Uh, so I think we'll just have her take over. That happened naturally, and she has the very high stewardship and enough to actually allow us to uh, control another holding as well. So we could do like a war real quick to take one of these two counties. Yeah, I suppose we could. Anything else we need to be aware of over here? Not really. We are trying to raise the troop numbers back up, though, uh, from those losses that we took in the previous conflict. Uh, I don't know if we would have to fight anybody else. But yeah, I wouldn't have to attack, fight him because it's a vassal. This would result in Galicia joining again. So clearly the better choice of a war would be uh, here against Nahara. Or N Nahara, I suppose, would be the correct, correct pronunciation. So yeah, I guess we would attack him. This is a, a Catholic Basque Countess. And so yeah, we would we would attack her next. I think I'd speed this up. And we've already got the troop numbers just about up. And we don't need all the troops to attack her, but you never know how this could spiral into a much larger conflict. Uh, Malik is paying homage. He also brought a gift with him. Excellent. And um, that, of course, of course, increased that uh, court grandeur, which I want to say that is now high enough. Let me just take a look. Uh, no, that's not the level I was thinking. I'm not entirely sure where that level is, where you get the next trait level. Yeah, see, that's the, the first trait level, which is level 5. Where's the next one? Okay, that's level 8, so pretty far away. And then they'll get the, the two uh, stewardship points from it. But this allows you to convince Dejure Territory Counselor to ask allow you to, to do that. Alright. So, Court continues to become 
more well-known and prestigious. And also, we just got a legacy. All right, well, one thing to consider is that we're trying to disinherit that grandson still. Um, so that's going to have a cost here. And so probably shouldn't do anything just yet there until after we paid it. It's 225 and uh, it's easier to get prestige than it is to get renowned. So I think we should wait to spend that until after we've already gotten him disinherited since he is set to take a bunch of counties from us. And we did all this work to secure the inheritance and get all these titles for our sons. It just doesn't make any sense to I'll let him take a bunch of territory from us. Uh, a grandson who already has gotten a duchy. And damn, we just lost another spouse. So it's just devastating us on the, the stress level. Good God. All right, so that's a problem. Um, our culture finally got the uh, Burr's innovation. Um, that will allow us to build uh, different duchy buildings. Of course, we've already built this one here. Uh, but yeah, there are more options available now to us. So I think we'll go ahead and find another spouse now. I mean, because we just have the one. Yeah, so I guess we'll find another spouse. And um, clearly we need somebody who has high stewardship and is not going to have any more children. Uh, we already have eight. We do not need to have any more kids, guys. Um, so we're just looking for a companion, an additional companion, I suppose, who's going to help us rule. Because uh, Yusuf has kind of come to rely on his wife while he sits around and smokes. Uh, he kind of has come to rely on his spouses to help him rule. And uh, he's just not going to be as good of a ruler without them, I think. Um, so let's bring another one in. Uh, we don't care about fertility. As far as religion, it should probably be the, the same branch of Islam as us. Uh, not lowborn. And I think that's pretty much it that we really care about here. Yeah. That's it. I don't care about traits or anything like that. So we're going for some of all skills, but we're going to sort this by stewardship. And we're going to want to hire the character that's the best the best steward, which is not really a good option here. Yeah. Not really a great option with only 16. Uh, but that's enough, I suppose. Or maybe not. I'm not entirely sure if that'll be enough. Uh, I think we're currently getting... We're only getting a little bit from her. Let me just double check on that. Uh, with the managed domain, we're currently getting five. Yeah, we're only getting five from her. So yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll just arrange the marriage for that that character. With the uh, best stewardship. Uh, Gertrude, I suppose, is her name. Uh, so yeah, we'll go with, with her. She's 44, so shouldn't have any more kids you'd expect. And let's throw that over there. Get ourselves another spouse. Who can help us rule, because... As much as we love Fatima, that's really not her uh, her focus. Uh, of course, that's going to piss Fatima off. She finally rose to primary spouse just to be replaced by a new spouse. That just seems kind of cruel, doesn't it? Uh, but that has fixed our, our issue over here. Uh, disastrous mistreatment. Oh, are we going to get an event about this? Oh, this is our, our daughter, Fatima. I forgot we had named her after her mother. Okay, so... It takes me a moment to recognize her. She's so bruised and swollen she barely looks human. As I grab her hand, my daughter attempts to speak, but no sound passes her lips. The reclusive physician, physician is standing in the corner of the room, anxiously wringing his hands, which of course is our son, Abu Bakr. And uh, that kind of changes our reaction here because it is our son. But yeah, he botched the treatment of her, I guess her wound. So that's uh, quite unfortunate. And so we can say this will not happen again, do you understand me? He'll become a chastised physician, losing prestige, but gaining learning. We can say, we all knew the risk, you are forgiven. He'll be grateful. We can say, guards, put him on a lock and key. We're not going to do that to our son. We're definitely not going to do this. Traitor deserves to die. I think we would do this one, chastise him. I mean, it is our daughter. And this will increase his learning as well. So that'll be helpful for him as a doctor, which he did get the novice physician. Uh, that's excellent. I was hoping he would get uh, the physician line of traits. Very happy about that. All right, but his, his learning is, is still not fantastic at 15. I mean, it's, it's all right. Um, a doctor, you typically want to have a little bit higher than that, but yeah, it's not bad. And he, he's getting better. Yeah, you know, it's it's difficult to become a doctor, so that's just something you learn. Sometimes um, you gotta learn through experience, through making mistakes. Uh, so this is a ransom offer. Um, yeah, of course we're gonna pay for him. 
I had forgotten that we had a, a character that was ransomed. Or needed to be ransomed. That had been captured, one of our knights. And we also got a martial perk. Excellent. All right, so it's going to get prepared conscription, reducing the army gold maintenance. That'll be pretty helpful. Also, friendly territory level your enforcement rate is up. All right, excellent. So we continue to move through our perk tree. And we were able to sway Idris. He's now uh, at 54 on the opinion. That's not bad, considering. And we have also converted another province. So let's go ahead and uh, get him working on a new location. Um, so let's go with... Let's see where we might want to do this. Probably in Leon, is what I think. That'd yeah, probably be for the best, guys. Uh, so let's going to convert the fate there. And we still have that one county over here that needs to be converted as well. So remember, we're not doing anything with the Dynasty Legacy just yet. Uh, we need to get that prestige up to 900. Ecstatic Peasantry. So the peasants in the sheikdom of al Kanis are in a good mood. The harvest is bountiful, the roads are safe, and the village elders are telling nonsensical stories of cows producing honey-laden milk and geese laying golden eggs. The peasants are praising me for their fortune and have sent a delegation carrying gifts. Alright, so we'll probably just graciously accept. Could send soldiers to collect more gifts, which, while well, we're greedy, I don't know if we would do that. We're not exactly cruel. We've been a pretty good ruler overall. I think that might be a bit much. And, uh, also, you know, it's it's not really the best option as far as money goes, because it's going to reduce your control by 50. Or you say, no, they need their surplus more than I do, which is a greedy character. We definitely won't do that. We're just going to graciously accept the gifts. We're happy to get the money, and um, I suppose we can go ahead and spend it now. We have stuff we could be getting here. Uh, we could also declare that war against him, or her, excuse me, excuse me that was uh, a countess right there. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and get some construction started. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build here first, and do we have the money to build here? We do not, apparently. Oh, okay, we still have to upgrade the castle, which we don't have enough money for that. All right, so I guess we would do the war here now. Yeah, there's not really anything I think to wait on, though I guess it would cost prestige, and we're already saving that prestige up, so we're not gonna do the war yet. Yeah, we need to get the up to the 900 prestige. So we lost the court grandeur there. Uh, what we had gotten was just temporary, so not really surprising. And also we got motivated workers. Right, excellent. Uh, so I, I think that was from our spouse. Spouse has always given us nice uh, benefits. Um, fortunately, that is going to have to be the end of today's episode. Yusuf has now hit 50. So he's, he's in his 50s and his health is poor because he's not getting those bonuses anymore and he's still obese. Um, so hopefully we can get this inheritance situation dealt with uh, so that uh, you know our, our grandson will inherit everything, which remember we are set to become Musa here. Who is his current guardian? She is not a good guardian. No. I don't know if we'll be allowed to change the guardian here. Like, let's say I wanted to do me. Yeah, that would be his guardian. Okay. Um, so, I really feel like we should do somebody else here. Somebody who's got, like, uh, really good intrigue. Try and get them trained up really well. Uh, you got Shakira, which she is family. Uh, she's here in our court, too. She has the good intrigue. Um, her learning's not great, but she does have the, the quick trait, so there's that. I think she'd be the best option. And she's related to him by marriage, so it makes sense. So I think we're going to go ahead and have her do it. Uh, we don't want her to convert culture or anything like that. Uh, so let's send the proposal off, and then we'll get this acceptance, and then this will be the last thing we do here. Just a, a better guardian here. Because, um, yeah, as of right now, I don't really feel like he had the best guardian that was available to him uh, for the intrigue route. Or for any route, because I think that guardian was kind of cruddy, period. Uh, and then also having him in our court is helpful for other reasons, you know, because he'll use our court tutor for the, the bonuses rather than his own, which we don't really know how good his court tutor would be. Uh, so I think this is one of our few Catholic vassals here, and we can lawfully imprison him. So I might want to take a look at that. We could, like, force him to convert. 3% chance of success. So he would rebel and we'd have to fight the rebellion off. Something to consider, though, if we wanted to, to get him converted. Since the Ramones have refused uh, all attempt to convert 
in the past. So let me know what you guys think. Should we arrest that guy? Or really, we'd have to you know, fight a rebellion and then arrest him. Uh, it'd be something to do here, though. And um, we can get another one of our vassals converted. But does Yusuf care enough about that to actually uh, arrest him? So I'll let you guys decide. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, which remember will be on Thursday. I will try and have a video on Thursday and Friday, since obviously we will not be able to have a Saturday video with me not being here over the weekend. So yeah, I'll try and have a Thursday and Friday one. Uh, but yeah, the next episode will be on Thursday. So I'll see you then, and thanks for watching, guys.